Hello and welcome to Small Cap Nation. I'm Jane King at the NASDAQ market site in Times Square. And with me today, Peter Culpepper, the CEO of Provectus Biopharmaceuticals. Welcome, Peter. Thank you very much, Jane. So your motto is, when patients win, we all win. That's the company motto. What does that mean? Yes, because we have to be focused on patients. The only way we can provide any benefit is for the patients to actually improve their outcomes. Sure, and they're your consumer. It's like a, a product. Yes, so that's and we're dedicated as people. We all came to the company because we're passionate about helping people, in particular with cancer. Now, one of your cancer drugs is, and I just want to make sure I get this all right, phase three clinical trial. This is PV-10. Yes. This is a treatment for local melanoma. Yes. Tell me about that treatment and where does that stand? Yes, so this is important because this is, this is stage three melanoma, and right now, even with all of our advances in treating in melanoma, we do not have an acceptable drug in this stage three category. Okay. So PV-10 is the first one we believe that could become standard of care, and we're in the phase three study in the middle of it in order to prove that it's better than the competitors. Okay. Hopefully. And PH-10 is also a treatment, so that's separate than PV-10. Tell me about yes. PH-10. So PH-10 is for all skin diseases, inflammatory dermatoses, so psoriasis, atopic dermatitis. So PH-10 is dermatology, PV-10 is for cancer. And where does PH-10 stand? In? We, we have finished various phase two studies okay. there, so we're not yet in phase three, but we're ready to go into phase three once we do some additional work with the FDA. Okay, and you've expanded your portfolio of intellectual property. Yes. Tell me about that. And that's exciting because we now have proved that we have a joint patent with Pfizer. So we have a patent that's jointly owned with Pfizer, which for PV-10 in particular. We also have protected the key ingredients of both PV-10 and PH-10 into 2031 and beyond. Mm, wow, yes. okay. And there is this emerging school of thought that combination cancer therapies are the way of the future. Do you agree with that? And what does that mean for people with cancer? Yes, and particularly for late stage disease, okay. so this would be stage four disease, mm -hmm. any sort of tumor type, liver cancer, breast cancer, melanoma, lung cancer, once you get into stage four, you have disease throughout the body. Mm -hmm. And so you need to use combination therapies, we believe it's very appropriate because the, the standalone treatments are not good enough yet by themselves. Mm -hmm. So because we do not yet have the solutions to stop disease completely in its tracks, once it gets further advanced, mm -hmm. we need to put, put together the right combinations to treat disease better. Our, our treatment can be useful by itself in stage three cancer, we, we believe, that's the phase three, mm -hmm. but we're also doing combination work, in particular with Merck's Keytruda, which is a, an approved drug for particularly stage four melanoma. Okay, and you have university partners, so who are those partners and what kind of research are they doing at the university level? Yes, this is very exciting. So we're working with world-class National Cancer Institute Comprehensive Care Centers, Moffitt Cancer Center in Tampa, Florida. They're working in breast cancer, melanoma, and just recently pancreatic cancer. Very exciting. So showing the relevance of our PV-10 in treating those solid tumors and why it works with the body's immune system. We also are working at the University of Illinois Chicago, another top center, in particularly colorectal cancer, showing again how PV-10 kills, the, destroys the tumor. We believe that it can destroy the tumor effectively enough, and we believe it can also prime the immune system. So once you destroy the initial tumor, the body sees the tumor, we call it making, making the tumor your friend. We're also doing work at MD Anderson in Houston, Texas, and even here in New York City, we have a top center that's not yet public that we're doing work. So we're expanding beyond our traditional centers. Okay, and how is your relationship with the FDA? Yes, <laughs> the FDA is a, is a very, very challenging bureaucracy, of course. But in our case, we happen to be working with an API, the active ingredient, that has been used routinely in humans for decades. So it's very unusual. The FDA is well aware of it. So we think there's a golden opportunity for healthcare, for patients, and for the FDA to see this compound that they're very familiar with diagnostically and help us accelerate our path to approval. So the FDA is rigorous in their scientific testing. We go around the world, so we un understand the gold standard for regulatory bodies is our own FDA. It's important to notice, though, that the FDA is constantly adapting to interface with companies like us. We work as best we can collaboratively. Mm -hmm. 
We're not antagonistic. We believe we can have an effective working relationship. Okay. And your stock was delisted recently, or at least is in the process of that. Yes. Where does that stand? What would it take to turn that situation around? Yes. So we are a, a still tr uh, a traded, listed on the, uh, we're or traded on the over the counter. So you're right. Oh, we were uh, trading on the New York Stock Exchange MKT. That trading has been suspended pending an appeal. So we have appealed the, the actual suspension. We can remain listed and resume trading on New York Stock Exchange if our stock price goes up to 20 cents minimum. That's going to be only possible if we can either effectuate a reverse split. So stockholders will vote on this okay. uh, on uh, November 28th. Okay. So to make that determination, if stockholders do not care about that, we remain trading over the counter at QB. However, we can always seek through the appeal process if we can get the stock up through news flow and sure. corporate partnerships and that sort of thing. So where we believe it's important to be listed, I believe our global uh, stock profile and visibility is enhanced if we're remain listed on one of the exchanges mm -hmm. like NYSE, MKT, or NASDAQ. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to see how that transpires after stockholders determine what they would like us to do. Okay. Thank you very much, Peter Culpepper, CEO of Provectus Biopharmaceuticals, for joining us today. Thank you. And thank you as well for joining us. And for more information on smaller companies doing interesting things, you can go to smallcapnation.com. I'm Jane King at the NASDAQ Market Site in Times Square.